Hi, I'm Patty with Studio R12 Stencils, and today we're going to do a very special um, project because it's one that you can use to display photographs. Um, and I think that that is just a really nice personalized gift. Um, it's also a personalized um, project. So um, we're going to do giveaways and we're going to answer your questions live. So we'll get started right after this. Okay, first thing I want to do is tell you about our grand prize drawings and our drawings. So we, as usual, we are going to give away three sets of our dome stencil brushes. These are the brushes that we use um, and they're the perfect stencil brush. Um, if you are here and you've been here before or you've used these brushes, if you wouldn't mind throwing a comment in there so other people know about these brushes, this is what will prevent bleeding under on your stencils. Um, they're shaped in a dome so that they don't splay the paint underneath your, um, your stencils. So that's super important to know about, okay? So we're gonna give away three sets today in the morning live. And then when we recast it tonight, so make sure you come back if you wanna look at it again or you don't have time to finish it or whatever, but um, you can enter in a different chance to win brushes then too. So um, make sure that you like, share, and comment, okay? And then everything that we're using today is going to be down in the description um, as well so that you're gonna know where to look and find um, the supply list. The grand prize is going to be this, um, it's a wonderful, hang on a second, it's the most wonderful time of the year. I'll get it straight. Anyway, um, that's my favorite song, by the way, It's a Wonderful Life. Um, so anyway, this is our grand prize drawing and that will be drawn tomorrow. And then everybody make sure that you say hi to Noelle. She's answering your questions live. And she is, um, she just is such a hard worker and just helps us out so much. And she's how everything gets done on the back end of things. All right, so what we're gonna do today is we are going to paint the This Is Us and we've got a personalized stencil. So it's got the names of Chris, Lena, Roran, and Leo. And Lena is our Lena from our lives. And she's my daughter-in-law. And this is baby Leo's picture and she's pregnant and she's going to have a little little Leo boy. Anyway, so we thought that this would be the right time of the year to make a project that would be the perfect gift project. Because you know, you've got that, you know, your mom, your grandma, great grandma, whatever, and they are, you know, they have everything they need. You know, they're all set, they're, they've done their thing and they, they just love their family. That's what they want more than anything is that. So we thought that this would make the best gift um, if you're thinking about that Christmas season gift and whatever. So you can print out photos um, and then we're gonna attach these underneath um, on here. Let me get that moved up just a little bit with the little clips and a string. And, um, and then that will, you can put, you can get your names put on there and then you can put your photos on there and then you can change them out. And every year you could send a new photo and updated like school picture kind of thing. But anyway, we just thought this would be the perfect, perfect um, gift idea. So we're gonna get started. Okay, so we've got, this is a pretty big stencil. Um, I think it's 27 inches or something like that long. Um, but I, what I like about it is I could put a pretty big picture under it. So, but we have, um, the neat thing about Studio R12 is, um, and by the way, the R and the 12 is for the Rawlinsons and that's like a little backstory there. Um, but anyway, there are six of us and they all get married and then there's 12, so R12. But um, that is, um, so I'll get started again. This will be great. Anyway, you can get the personalization done here, but then also on the size, um, we are a unique company because um, we manufacture our stencils um, here in the U.S. and we, are in, we do that. That's here at our facility um, in Ohio. And what's cool about that is I, as an artist for 30 years, I would go to the craft store and I would try to buy, you know, like a stencil and it would come in a 11 by 8 sheet and the little art would be really little. And then I would be like, but I can't put that on my nice sign in my house, or I can't put it on my pillow, or I can't put it on whatever. And so we decided that we were gonna do everything in 
extra large all the way down to as small as we can. So you can find all sizes on our website as well. And that's studior12.com. Um, so here we go. We're gonna do a cool and groovy background today. I'm gonna roll up my sleeves and get dirty. Okay, and we need a foam brush. Um, I like the poly foam brushes because they are, the poly foam is much better because it is, um, it, it doesn't flop. So when I'm base coating, it, it has no flop to it. We're gonna use tone on tone colors. So just kind of three basic colors. Um, I'm gonna start with the cream color. We use this cream a lot. It is trendy, 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 trendy. And then I'll put out the other two while I'm doing this. And then I've got a really cool, crazy technique I'm gonna show you. Um, this is why, um, I hope that you guys will like and share and say the things that you've liked that we've taught you on these lives um, or in our videos so that other artists get educated too. But um, I love to teach crazy magic things. So that's, that's what I'm about. Okay, so we've got this product and it is Clapham's Salad Bowl Wax. And it is beeswax, um, and it is food safe. And wax is one of the hardest surfaces um, once it dries on your piece, so it makes a really good finishing step. But this step we're gonna use in the beginning. Now, we also use Minwax for our finishing as well, um, and we use the natural and then the special dark, okay? However, if you notice, the Minwax is crumbly just a little bit. So um, it doesn't do this technique as well. Um, and I don't know if we just left it propped open, um, but when it is crumbly, it doesn't do this technique very well. But we do keep a sponge in there um, and then we rub it around in there when we're doing our finishing and that makes it super easy to always have a sponge inside. So, and that is available on our website. Okay, and that I'll shut later. Okay, so I wanna make this be a really kind of um, distressed and aged board. So I'm gonna open this up excuse me, my wood is all natural. I haven't sealed it. You can seal it. If you're gonna hang something outside, you wouldn't hang this project outside, but um, if you're gonna hang something outside, you wanna use a polyvarethane or the multi-purpose sealer to seal it and you wanna do back and front and sides and then your board will be nice and sealed in. Um, paint, we call paint is plastic and the sealer, so the sealer is made so that it bonds with your um, board and then the paint is designed to bond into the sealer. So it's like a little paint sandwich. So when you put it on back and front, you're making a little sandwich out of the wood and you're protecting it. So just a little tip. Okay, so I'm gonna take my finger, it's food safe. So if you're making furniture, redoing a wooden high chair for a baby, um, doing a salad bowl, um, any of that kind of stuff, this is what you can use for that and it's completely food safe. You can just scoop it out and eat it if you wanted to. So I'm gonna take and I'm just going to apply interesting shaped blobs. Um, so, and I don't need it to be very thick, okay? So I'm just gonna go on here. I don't wanna be like stripe, stripe, stripe. Um, that's bad, bad, bad. So I'm just gonna make interesting, and I'll build them up so maybe there's like a triangle or a pyramid a little bit. And I don't want them lined up like that, so now I gotta make something stretch. Okay, and then a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take my stencil, and I'll kind of lay it out there and see. I wouldn't want to put too many, um, too many of these distressed things that I'm about to build through the names because you won't be able to you won't be able to um, read them. So I am going to put them down at the bottom, and I got a lot of room at the top, so I can put extra, extra big. So you can see that this is very technical, and that I'm a super attention to detail with this, right? super fun to do. Um, the first time I did this, um, I thought I was the craziest, cleverest person ever. I think I came shrieking out of my painting studio. Like, oh my God, it worked! Because this is gonna make chipped paint. So if you think about, you know, Joanna Gaines or, you know, the farmhouse movement and everything that's antique is what's cool, right? But everything that's antique costs a lot of money. And so I'm like, a lot of other people in the world, I am not made of money. You know, I work hard and I do my stuff and, you know, I'm, I don't care about it too much either, so that helps. <laughs> but anyway, so what's neat about this is this can get you the look without spending the money. Okay, so I think I want a little bit extra, maybe some bigger ones. 
And then I kind of squint at it. I've got a little bit of line, line, line going here. So maybe this one needs to join with something else so it makes it not be liney. And maybe a little bit here and there. Okay, I'm gonna call that done. I don't want it everywhere, but I do want it, um, I want it around. Okay, we're gonna take our paper towel, wipe our finger off, and now we get to layer some paints. This is one of those projects that um, in the classic paint it until it's pretty. Um, that's something that we learned um, painting signs. Um, we got, and I think I was even doing it too, we had some new employees and we were training them to paint and stuff and they, um, because we have to do so many samples, we have to have more people painting than just me or just Lena and me. And so they help us get the samples so we can get photos and all of that. And they were painting like to a formula. They were like, I did this step, I did this step, I did this step, and then moved on. Um, and that can get you into trouble when you're doing art because what's happening is like you might get to the end of step four and it might be ugly, you know, but if you stop there, then you're gonna be like, that's ugly. So you wanna keep going. And this is one of those projects where if I do my swooshes and my, my things, I'll get painting so that you can see it, um, that I can keep layering over and over again and get it until I like it and get it exactly, okay? So we're going to just move our board so it flows with my arm. If you're trying to, sometimes I think it's really wrong to sit down and paint big boards like these. Um, stand up and see if that gives you a little bit more leverage, but it helps to just get that big movement going. Okay, and then I sweep off on the edge so that it doesn't make a mess of my edges and then I can go back and make my edges a color. All right, make sure that you're liking and sharing and then tell us where you're from. Like, you know about us, but tell us a little bit about you. Okay, because we, we care, believe it or not. We care, care, care. And we, um, we have a lot of fun. We'll be like, oh my gosh, did you see what, you know, Julie painted last week and she shared it with us. And we'll like take their computer or the laptop around to everybody and show them what you've done. So share your projects because like we get excited about it. You know, we spend a lot of time making these projects, um, these stencils for people to paint projects and so when you guys get it and you get excited enough to share with us it's like it's like takes it all the way to the finish line okay so here we go just big big movement notice i'm not covering the whole board i'm leaving some of that wood to show through but when i peel this paint off in a minute um you'll see that you'll see the board anyway but having some of that scratchiness and see here where I got a little wild and I, I curved out right there? I can use my paint and straighten that right back out. So paint it, is, paint it until it's pretty, but paint is also an eraser. So if I make a mistake, I can erase it with my paint. So never be afraid to paint it again. Okay? And then I've got that color, and this is a really neat project because I'm just gonna go boom, boom, right into the next paint. Just boom, boom, boom. Just attack it. And then I'm just gonna use a lighter touch and I'm not gonna cover it everywhere. So we're just making old, um, distressed. One of my very first magazine articles that I was published in um, had a clock that was a brand new pine clock. It was a big two foot one right when that trend started and stuff. And um, I did a interchangeable one, but I wanted the background to be like this weathered wood. And I um, had it laying in my painting studio and somebody came in and they said, where'd you get that antique clock? And I was like, well, it's paint. And they were like, no. Yeah. And then we flipped it over and it was brand new pine board on the back and gnarly on the front. It was great. So I love doing techniques where you can like pretend like it's something else, like a faux thing. Okay, so we got that color on and I left a little ledge there. Need to go fix that. Oh, it's not the same. When you're doing chipped and old, you want to avoid same matchy matchy. Don't keep things lined up. Okay, I'm gonna go into that greeny mushroom color. And it's kind of a gray green, but it's a, like a really toned gray green. It really adds quite a bit to this, I think. And then if you are painting 
And so see how I'm just hit and miss in there? I'm not getting it everywhere. This is like the accent color. I felt like it was moving a little bit too far in the warm direction. Okay, so now we've got quite a bit of paint on here and it's a little bit thick. So now is when you would let it dry and you would let it dry. I would probably just, if you heat this up, your wax is going to melt and then you make it weird. I would leave it and let it sit overnight. Okay, I'll drop that in the water and then I've got another board prepped here. I'm gonna need that stencil. Okay. You're right. Prep board. Now's when the fun happens. Okay, so if you're having fun with this, like, share, and comment for when entering to win the brushes and the grand prize drawing. Okay, so make sure like, share, and comment, and then that helps us and it helps other artists too. So I noticed. Um, on our lives, like when I'm not doing the live, I'll be helping answer questions live. And then um, Noelle is on there, so make sure you say hi, Noelle. Noelle's on there almost every week. And then um, Lena might be on there, but she's Prager's, so we're giving her more breaks than she usually would have. And um, anyway, so when we're doing the lives, the customers start talking back and forth. You guys are talking to each other, so make sure you say hi to your friends that you're making online. Um, I think it's great to have friends that are in your painting world. Okay, we're going to use coarse sandpaper. I think it's a 60 grit and <clears throat> it's super rough and I'm about to trash the sandpaper. So this is a sanding block and it's very ergonomically nice and it fits your hand so you don't get that fatigue. You could just roll up sandpaper, but this really does work and this you can get it like hardware stores. Okay, so my paint, you can see where some of it's peeled off. Um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to drop the glasses. And then I'm going to just dig on it. And then look at that magic right there. That, you can't paint, you can't replicate it. It has to be this random effect, right? And so this is where, like, that's what I was after. I always wanted something that looked like it was chipped paint. And I couldn't ever really replicate it. I could just make paint thicker and thicker and, and confuse the eye. But this is like magic. That's on those big signs that you see in, like, restaurants and stuff. I get excited. Okay, so. I'll just dig into it. And then if I feel like, and now one thing that you do want to do is don't, if you want to go through your, your layers, make sure that you give yourself, um, don't let it dry like two weeks. Because if you don't get back to it, it'll be hard to get through those layers. You have to work harder. So overnight is all the time. Okay. Hi. Okay, so we got our chips. All right. And now see how trashed that is right there. I'm gonna flip it over so I can use this clean side and get some scratches. This is a workout. When I get done painting, you will see the crumbles at my feet. It'll be like so many crumbles because I really do love sanding through stuff. I think it just marries things, you know? So if I have a bit of this, this um, gray color that's a little bit solid, I'll go run through that. So this project is really more about this, this background technique than anything because it's basic stenciling. However, if you're new to stenciling, please pop a comment into our comment box and let us know. And then if there's anything that you want to know, make sure you're asking. That's the whole idea of doing these live answer, ses answer sessions is that you guys will be able to get real-time answers. Okay, so clean up my mess. Okay, and now it's time to stencil. If you've done a whole lot of this wax technique, what can happen is you can, this can be like slippery and stay slippery, and then your stenciling will fall off, okay? So the very thing that makes it release will make your painting release as well. So what you can do for that is you can take a um, degreaser and you can squirt it on there and then just wipe it down. I have definitely done that before. Okay, 
I'm gonna pop this on there. So on the paint it until it's pretty thing, um, this is where you could take your brush. Just gonna do one line through it, just to show you. Say I didn't like how dark this was sitting right in the middle of there, so I can put some makeup on it. I can be like, yeah, take that down just a notch. Okay, so if you want to, maybe you want it a little brighter, you can dip into that and go brighter over the top. Maybe you want it more brown. Maybe you want it whatever. Um, you can do that at any point. And honestly, you can do it after your stenciling. So my stencil's the size of my board, so I don't need to measure anything. I recommend that you take two corners and tape them only because if you get all the way through to this level, then you're going to be like, ah, it moved, you know, and you'd be mad. So let's keep tears at bay. All right, and we are going to use a color. I didn't decide that first, but I think we'll go with this dark mushroom. It's like a mushroomy gray. Always shake your paint and never hit your hand like that. Um, craft paints are in those little two ounce bottles and I was a craft paint girl until I owned a stencil company and then hitting the hand like that. One day my hand is shooting pain up my arm and I'm like, why is my, why is my hand hurt? And I was like, oh, you dummy. So don't do that because it's damaging your nerves. All right, get my napkin. We're gonna pick up with the dome brush, the perfect dome brush, which you can win today. Make sure you're like, sharing, and comment, commenting. And you're gonna pick up just a little blob on your brush and then you wipe it off and then I swirl it off. Um, the more time you spend on the napkin, the more time you are going to not bleed under, okay? So then I'm a swirler, so if you're a stippler or you're a swirler, post that in the comments. It's kind of fun to see who's, who's swirling and who's, who's stippling. And I talk my brush dry, so I'll load it again. And then I'm a swirler, so that means I'm gonna hold things down when they're in a big, um, a big area like that. So maybe this can move just a little bit. Okay, make sure that um, you're saying hi to Noel. And give us a shout out and let us know what you liked um, about this episode of Painting Live. And then we've got some new features, or I guess they're not new anymore, but um, we've got some features that are, we've got Ask Carrie, which is another episode of this where it's specifically answering your questions, but to everybody. And then we've got um, some specials, and then we've got some speed videos. So like this technique I might do on a speed video, and we film it, but there's no vocals or things like that. So it's a great, like, quick tutorial. And then let us know which ones you like and why. Like, that'd be kind of fun to hear. How long you've been painting. And then share your creations with us because we love that. All right, and see how fast this goes? Like, stenciling is magic dust, okay? Like, I'm not even kidding. It makes me so happy to know that I can get these lettering, this letters, these letters, oh, I can get that out, done in seconds, just about minutes. Um, and I'm gonna go over that, this is us, one more time. The, um, I used to, um, I, I've been a letter lover forever, um, so every project that I've painted just about in my life, I think I have seven or 800 before I started stenciling, and um, every one of them had words on them. I love words, and word art, and typography, and fonts, and all of that. And so I'm owning the right company here, but um, anyway, they, um, Every one of these, uh, those projects had to be done using tracing paper and then taking like an artist brush and like filling in every letter. And then because it wouldn't base coat right the first time, then I had to do it two or three times. So, I mean, something like this would have taken me three or four hours to do. And you're seeing it in full live film video going in minutes. And I'm not needing any care. I don't even need to have talent. We could give this brush to a nine-year-old and um, they would be successful. So this is good for families. Um, you know, we've got a weird, funny 2020 if you're catching this this year. Um, so this is great stuff to do with your kids. Um, 
great to do just to keep your mind busy, you know? It's, and it's fun. And you can decorate your house. Okay, so that's that, uh, which is fun. How quick that went. Okay, and so in minutes, you can have a finished, beautiful project that you can give as a gift. And, you know, boards are cheap. Um, if you're handy, they're really cheap. Um, but yeah, you can do this so fast. And then what you do with this after, um, we use command strips to hang our boards. Um, what you do with this after though, is you take your pictures and maybe some raffia. You could drill some holes. Um, my string is over here. I'm not gonna show this part because um, we couldn't find the drill. Um, and it was, oh, ha! That's fun. Lena did this with her hair once. All right, and I'm out of paper towels. All right, so this is when we watch a juggling show. What's the funniest thing you've ever done with paint that was a big oopsie? One friend of mine sat on her paint palette. Oh my gosh, like that's fun. Whew. At least she didn't sit down someplace else. Okay, so you're gonna drill holes in this. You're gonna tie your string, I'm stepping on everything. All right, you're gonna tie it in a knot. I would tie it in a knot in the front. And then you'll let it drape right there. And then you'll use cute little paper clips, which are on our website, actually. Hello, little Leo, can't wait to meet you. And you're gonna clip those onto your string. And there's Lena's pretty wedding. We did like all of the stenciled signs and things for her wedding, it was wonderful. Really, inexpensive affordable way to put a wedding together too um, okay so that's our project great gift for family for grandmas moms and I'll bet you it, my husband loves these little guys like these little guys too but he really loves these little guys so I think even a grandpa gift um, I think that would be lovely in an office or something like that so um, thank you for painting with me today and make sure you like share and comment and we'll get, see you next time